Lifelong Laker fan. Champion. Absolutely. Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, talk to him. 2020. Yeah, man. Thank you. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> you, made, you, you made the year worth living, for yeah, real. You know, it's like, you know, until that happened, I was like, man, it's got to be the worst man, year ever. Uh, ever. So the Lakers, the Dodgers was, you know, my... And I didn't want nobody to play. You know, I know people, if they watch me on on um, social media, I was like, man, we don't need to play nothing. You know what I'm saying? We That's just need Jack to was. Yeah, focus was. on the mission at hand. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm glad they played and give people a little bit of relief. Talk to us about just when did, when did your journey with the Lakers start? Obviously, uh, you know, I'm from California, so I grew up, even though I was in Northern California, I grew up a uh, Showtime, Magic Johnson, Laker fan. What do you uh, mean, when did it start? It started from the womb. Yeah. It started from, from conception. Mm -hmm. It was in you. The blood was Shit, in you. Yeah, man. I mean, now it was a purple sperm that hit the egg. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, when did it start? I don't understand that question. From Joe. <laughs> I don't remember when it, I wasn't a Laker yeah, fan. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. but you know, seriously, like when I was 10 years old, my brother sat me down. He was like, yo, I want you to watch this dude. I was just getting into basketball because they was just letting me play. You know, my backyard was some of the most ferocious basketball games. It's like prison ball. Yeah. You know, so uh, they were starting to let me play. I was getting strong enough and good enough. And um, he said, I want you to watch this dude. And we watched, it was my first time watching Magic Johnson play Larry Bird in that championship game. I wanted Magic to win. You know what I mean? He was the cooler dude. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> you know, a few months later, he come get me from outside. He said, guess who's a Laker? Mm -hmm. No way in the world I was thinking he was going to say Magic Johnson. So when he said Magic Johnson, something just erupted in me. You know what I mean? It was just like I was glued and locked in. And then that team going to win the championship, mm -hmm. I was done. I don't know how you could get me back from that. We actually had Jeannie Buss on the show the other day. What are some, th some of the things you remember from that, that Showtime era and, and what it meant to the city? Before Magic Johnson, it seemed like basketball was like a job. It's like everybody was mad, it seemed like. And it seemed like this dude brought in like the fun, the way we played, the the pointing and the smiling and like, you know, just the energy mm -hmm. it felt like our street. You know, I grew up on a street called Van Wick. We had a lot of boys on our street. It was very athletic street. So we had fun playing. So to see the Lakers now having fun playing, running at a Showtime fast break mm -hmm. style, it just was electric, man. You know, it just was, you know, I was glued to that team. To me, it was like, and I didn't live too far from the form, mm -hmm. you know. I, and so just being able to drive past that form sometime. You know, I used to drive past that to basketball practice, just knowing that that my favorite team played right there. You know, it was just uh, I felt lucky to be in L.A. and a Laker fan at that time. Be a part of it. Yeah. Fast forwarding into the kind of Kobe and Shaq era, the next great run that the Lakers team had. Thoughts on that team? And, you know, they were able to capture five championships. They probably obviously could have captured more if they stayed together. But just how amazing was it seeing day in, day out Shaq and Kobe play for your team? I mean, seeing them at that form, like the form is so intimate. You know, you could hear my voice yelling at the refs, you know what I'm saying? So it was just magical to get Shaq. It was like, oh, damn. I, I just couldn't believe the Lakers pulled that off. You know, I, I've seen the Lakers pull off stuff, you know, like, uh, you know, McAdoo and, you know, these players that you'd be like, damn, we got him to make us better. And, mm -hmm. But to get Shaq was like, I guess it's, it's how it felt when they got Kareem. You know, I wasn't really hip when they got Kareem, but it was it was remarkable. And so I'm there to see Shaq and my wife say, did you hear about the young kid we got? And I'm like, nah. And he looked, she's like, we got a young kid, 18. I'm like, 18? I'm like, is he seven foot tall? Because if he ain't seven foot, he ain't going to make it. Because back then, right, it was, it was like big. you had to be a big to come mm -hmm. out of high school. He got loose and, and, and dunked. 
And I just told my wife, I said, we ain't never had nothing like that. Mm. So I was just on Kobe, you know, even though we had Shaq, I'm, I'm just locked in on Kobe and just seeing his progression as a pro. And I'm yelling, Dale Harris, put him in, put in Kobe, put in Kobe. I'm yelling, you know what I'm saying? Cause Dale Harris was just keep this kid on the bench mm -hmm. all game. I'm like, damn man, come on naked gun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, naked gun, get him in there. Oh, shit. What's your most memorable live performance by Kobe? It got to be the comeback, his seventh game. Portland? Portland. You know, I was in the suite with the homie K-Mac. We in there reading the eulogy. Like, how? <laughs> in the fourth quarter, we losing by 15, 17. Mm -hmm. And we just looking at each other saying, how did this happen, man? I'm like, I'm just gonna watch the rest of the game. I'm like watching, and you know that comeback. You start to feel that, that energy, momentum mm -hmm. switch, and and I start doing the calculations in my head. I'm like, yo, we get this down to this before the five minute mark. That shot, woo! You know what I'm saying? And they just coming, 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 and you know, seeing him do that dunk, mm. um, the crossover, the, the crossover the lob. lob, and seeing that that you know, explosion was crazy. Now, I missed the 81 game. Mm. I was out, of, I was in Cabo with my wife, we was in Mexico. We watched it on TV, but I'm like, right. damn, the day we don't go, <laughs> we go for 81. And then I miss his farewell game because I'm filming Barbershop 3 or something in mm. Atlanta and and I can't come to that last farewell game. So mm -hmm. I missed the 60 point mm -hmm. game, but um, I didn't miss nothing else. Mm -hmm. I didn't miss nothing else. That's big. So you co-narrated co the 30 for 30 Lakers Celtics thing. The Lakers obviously hung their 17th banner. Talk to us about the experience of being able to do that for a team you grew up idolizing. Now you're narrating a story for them. For somebody to come and tell you, look, we want you to narrate, you know, this precious rivalry Mm. that you lived through. Mm. I mean, in 84, when the Lakers lost to the Celtics, I was this close to killing somebody. I was like, mm -hmm. I was this close to killing somebody because I had never experienced this whole Celtic-Laker rivalry. You know, my thing was like, I hate them 76ers because they beat us and, mm -hmm. and, you know, they beat us in 82, they beat us in 83. Don't worry about no Celtics. We yeah. got Magic. We got Kareem. My brother, when we when, when he was like, "Yo, we playing the Celtics," he just got sad. He was like, "Oh damn!" I'm like, "What? We can beat him?" He was like, "Man, I lived <laughs> through this. So I lived through the '60s. We couldn't beat these dudes, mm. and and we lost. And I just, you know, I was crushed. So, you know, long story short." We finally beat them in 85 and then mm -hmm. beat them again in 87. You know, they got us when we were shorthanded, but we beat them again. But, you know, so I had real feelings, real passion for that mm -hmm. as a kid crying over these games. And to be able to put that on wax, so to speak, mm -hmm. was just one of those dream come true moments.